what other people are doing or not doing, Lord. We're going to be faithful. We're going to be loyal. We're going we're gonna to have our faith. Lord, we pray that, like you told Jeremiah, let our faith be like flint, Lord God. Let it be like a rock that just goes forward no matter what is in front of us, no matter what we see, no matter what the territory brings, Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Let us be led by your spirit, Lord God, in this territory that you're taking us to, the territory of faith, Lord God, the territory of the last days, and the territory, Lord God, that you're taking the church in, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let us be full of faith. Let us have that vision, Lord God. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, to be able to reach the lost. Help us, Lord God, to lift up our eyes and see that the harvest is ready. And not be, Lord, those people that think there's still plenty of time, Lord. Help us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, but we need your help for that, Lord. We need your spirit, Lord. We pray your presence be with us this morning, God. Help us, Lord God. Give us, open up our understanding that we would understand the scriptures today, God. Hallelujah. Let your word sink into our heart, Lord God. Let it penetrate, Lord God, the most deepest part of our soul, God. Let it bring change to our lives, Lord. Oh, we're going to worship you. We're going to praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let us be full of faith. Let us be full of praise. Let us be full of a hallelujah, amen, exaltation of your name, Lord. Let us go forward, Lord God, in the power of your spirit, Lord God. Let us, Lord God, help the lost, Lord God. Let us, Lord, be able to minister to this to this world Lord God we ask it in Jesus name in Jesus name and we thank you right now hallelujah hallelujah amen 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 hallelujah we have to understand that we can't live our life with our eyes you got to live your life through faith Amen. in God's Word. You really do. Because if you start using your eyes, you're going to get yourself in trouble. And so, because, you know, we understand, and, and that's the thing. I'm only going to say this because I don't want us to be that way. But there, sometimes we see people that um, they only live for God when they're in trouble. That's right. They only get interested again because there's a trial or, or something's happening to them, you know. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you know, they're there, you know. Mm -hmm. But what God really wants from all of us is just a consistency. Just a more of a consistency, you know. That it's a, that's why we're called disciples. Remember when we first started this class, it was disciples, disciples, disciples. You know, because... It takes a discipline in, in our lives to to put God first and, and to do it from your heart and not because you're going through a trial or you're sick or this or that and then all of a sudden, yeah, now now you're seeking God. Amen. But you want to be able to be living for God, whether you're going through the mountain or through, through the valley or you're just going through the plain areas or God where sometimes... It might seem like it might be a little boring or whatever, but you just want to be able to live in a consistent way for God. And that's what God's looking for. Amen. And that's what he's calling us to. And so we thank God for that. And, and always seek that in your life because you got to live by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And so yesterday we were in Joshua chapter 5. And, and I want to thank all of you that are online with us. And and those of you that are with us, amen, hallelujah. Remember to tell a friend and to invite somebody. And if you can't be here, amen, um, invite somebody to our line, our Facebook um, on live at, at 11 o'clock, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Also to our Lighthouse of the Valley services on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, Sunday at 10 o'clock. Amen. Let's get busy about God's business. Amen. And so we were on Joshua chapter um, five, and we were talking about how the manna had ceased, amen, and now the people, amen, had to start eating or harvesting 
from the land, amen, that they were called to. God called them to cross the Jordan. And once they crossed the Jordan, the manna that came down every day for them stopped. And now it was time for them to eat off the land. And you have to realize, and that's how, I wasn't even thinking about that when I told you what I just told you earlier. You can't be living by emotions. You can't be living by what's happening, trials, or you're sick, now you're going to serve God. You got to live off the land, which means you're like a farmer. If you're not out there doing something, you're not going to eat. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of it, the mouth of God. So now, as a Christian, now you have to live off the land, the promised land. And that land is the land of faith. You got to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You got to live by faith. And, and that's the way you will be eating. That's the way you'll be strong. That's the way you'll always have a harvest in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I had on my notes there, it says, when you reach the other side, it is time to work. To live off the harvest of the land, you shall be living off the land. They ate the produce that came from Canaan. Amen. And uh, Canaan was a very fruitful land. Amen. It was very fruitful. And that's why God, that was God's promise to Abraham. We talked about that yesterday. You know, that God, God's not going to give you junk. He's basically, he's giving you the best land on earth. That's yours because you're my kids. You know what I mean? But you got to go take it. Amen. Hallelujah. By faith. Amen. Praise God. So Canaan, the land of promise, and also the land of faith. I want you to underline that. The land of faith. Amen. Praise God. And we talked about that yesterday. Amen. How it was. It's, it's the... Um, for believers only territory because you really have to be a believer amen you have to have faith amen hallelujah to be in in this territory praise God and so today we're going to look at um, Joshua chapter 5 and we missed this yesterday a little bit and so we're going to go to Joshua chapter 5 and we're going to look at Verse 13. Hallelujah. And this is a, a scripture that's always got my attention because I think it has a lot of significance. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 13. Hallelujah. And we're going to read that all the way to verse 15. 13, 15. Okay? Five, Joshua 5, 13, 15. And it says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. Amen. So we see here that Joshua, you know, he had, he had a mission that God gave him. So he's kind of spying out Jericho and he's there looking at Jericho. You could imagine, man, that's a big city, big old walls all around it. Amen. And while he was looking... Behold, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. So what did Joshua saw? He saw this man, and, and if and really, you could write this down in your, in your notes. It's what many uh, Bible scholars or, you know, people like that would call a theophany. A theophany. T-H-E-O-P-H-E. A N Y theophany, which means amen, hallelujah, that God, amen, manifested. All right, and we're going to see that, in other words, that this man, hallelujah, we could imagine, you know, hey, if he's the angel of the Lord, that's what he is, the angel of the Lord, he's a pretty big guy, and he has his sword out, amen, he has a sword in his hand, amen, and so he has his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him. That means Joshua, you know, hey, praise God for people like Joshua, right? He's not scared. <laughs> he probably was, but you still have to do God's will, right? <laughs> you might still be kind of scared and trembling. Hey, I'm still going to do God's will. Amen. Not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. I might have to, looks like I might have to fight this big old dude. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's doing here. <laughs> I don't know who he is. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God. And he went unto him and said, 
Unto him, very important question. This is what we need to really think about. Are you, are you for us? Are you for us or are you for our enemy, our adversary? Right? That's the question. Are you with us or are you against us? Amen. And the answer that came from the, the angel of the Lord is this, nay. And that's really important. I want you to just underline that one word, nay. Because what he's saying is, I'm not here with you and I'm not here against you. And that's the thing that we have to understand. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and I put on, on my notes, hallelujah, praise God for that little section there. It says, on my notes it says, God does not, God does not come or show up to fulfill your dreams. He's not here. He doesn't come around to make sure that what you want gets done. He's not here to make sure that your will gets done. He's not here to fulfill your desires. He's not here to fulfill your aspirations. That's why he said, nay, I'm not here to, I'm not here for you. And I'm not here against you. What he's saying is, I'm here to make sure that God's will gets done. Now, if you're with that, then I guess we are together. Hello? <laughs> That's the real answer. Okay, it's more like, are you with me? That's the real, the real answer to that. Not so much, am I with you? The question is, are you with me? Are we going to do this together? Praise God. And so, on your notes it says, but one thing he does make sure is to accomplish God's will on the earth. Hallelujah. He is God's plans and God's will. Amen. He, he's there to accomplish that. And so we see... Amen. Verse 14, and he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? Amen. I have come. What is he saying? I have come with the army of God. Amen. Praise God. So when you're in God's will, and, and you're in God's you're in God's will and you're doing God's what God wants, amen. The army of the Lord is with you. It says, as uh, the captain of the host of the Lord, <clears throat> am I now come? And Joshua fell. And this is how we know that this was a man, the angel of the Lord, or a theophany, because we see the same thing here in Exodus 3, where Moses also worships at the fiery and the bush. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so it says right here Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. Amen. And said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? <clears throat> and this is what this is what he said, and just like what happened with Moses. And the captain of the Lord host said unto Joshua, Take your shoes off. Amen. From thy feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Amen. So we know that this was a theophany. This is the the angel of the Lord or the presence of God. If it were a regular angel, he would have said, get up. I'm just an angel. Sure. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so, so what we're really, we're really important to understand is that, amen, God's very presence shows up when we're in God's will. Amen? And, and the, the army of God, amen, is there when we are in God's will. Amen. And uh, in Matthew 24 and verse 34, and I find it very interesting when I thought about the scripture is that Matthew 24, if we know, it's end time scriptures. End times, it's basically telling you what's going to happen in end time. Hallelujah. And so one of the things we see in this story with Joshua, and we see in Matthew 24, 34, as that God's will is going to get done. God's will is going to get done. It says, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, <clears throat> This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Amen? Everything that God says is going to happen is going to happen. And, and the angels of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord, and the armies of the Lord are making sure it comes to pass. Amen. Praise God. 
So we got to make sure that we understand that. Hallelujah. And we're on the right side. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 20. I think you, got, you already went there. Let's take a look at that. Matthew 24. We can see a little bit of, of the context. And verse 33, interesting, says, So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is e near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Right? Everything that on this earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. <clears throat> Amen. That's important that we understand, hallelujah, that God's will is going to come to pass. Amen. Praise Amen. God. No matter who says what. No matter what politics are saying. No matter what anyone's saying. That's why it's so important for us to be busy in God's word. Because we're, we're, when we're busy in God's word and in prayer, then we have that vision. You know, he said when you see these things come to pass, that's somebody who's know what's going on and is watching. Amen. You know what time it is on the earth. Praise God. Amen. So let's go back to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. Amen. And we talked about how um, we're talking about the land of faith. I really want you to think about that. The land of faith. That, that really... When we are walking with God, we got to be full of faith. It's about faith. Amen. Amen. And so this, it says in, in verse 1, Now Jericho was straightly shut up. It was tightly shut. Amen. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. Amen. And that, that name Jericho means fragrant, goodly, fruitful place. Amen. So Jericho was something that was, amen, we had to take. Amen. We talk about Jericho. We talked this about before in our Bible study before. Jericho symbolizes a stronghold. And if you remember what I, we talked about, about strongholds, strongholds, amen, are areas or things that the enemy, that the devil, that the demons, whatever you want to call it, the kingdom of darkness, amen, has taken away from the church, amen, and they fortify it, amen. That's why it says straightly shut up or tightly shut up, amen. The enemy does everything it could possibly do to keep you from taking it back. Mm -hmm. Amen. And some of these strongholds, we talked about it before, our prayer. God, God wants you to be a praying person. The enemy would love to have you never pray. God wants you to be in his word and he tries to keep you from being in your word. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. God wants you to be a disciple and enemy that wants you to just be whatever. You don't have to be no discipline in your life. Don't, you know what I mean? We're talking about discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Being consistent. Hallelujah. In your prayer life and your word life and all that. Amen. Hallelujah. These are all strongholds that the church has to take back. And that's why we talked when we first started, not even thinking about this, that some people don't serve God unless something happens. Yes, true. Unless something happens to them. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they have this stronghold in their life and they got to take it back. Amen? Praise God. Grace, sanctification, holiness, all those things are strongholds that the enemy has tried to take away from the church and we need to take it back. Hallelujah. And we talked about before in Matthew 11, verse 12 through 13. Hallelujah. Let's look at that. And really, these are all areas that God is having us take back in these end times. Matthew 11, 13. verse 12 through 13. Amen. It says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered. That word suffered means allows, or the kingdom of heaven is expecting, amen, violence, and the violent take it by force. Amen. Those are people that actually 
do what God wants. They're in the promised land. Now they're in Canaan. Amen. And they ate, amen, of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. So this is important. You understand. If you want to know when the manna stopped coming down, it's right here. After they crossed the promised land. Okay, after they, after they cross, I'm sorry, the Jordan. Amen. And now they're in the promised land. Now they have to eat from the produce of the land. And sometimes we wonder why things don't go our way. Amen. We, got, we repented of our sins. We have faith. We got baptized in Jesus' name. We got filled with the Holy Ghost. We got to eat off the land. We have to have faith. Amen. And so it says, verse 11, And they, they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow, or the next day, after the Passover, unleavened cakes and a parched corn, self same day. Verse 11 in the New Living Translation says like this, The very next day they began to eat unleavened bread and roasted grain harvested from the land. Amen. So the very next day they had to Get busy and make themselves something to eat. Amen? Praise God. And so, because, like we said, they have reached the other side. And now they had to live off the harvest of the land. And as Christians, we got to walk in faith. Amen? We got to, what, what does the Bible say? The just shall live by what? Faith. If you don't have faith and you're a believer, you ain't going to have much of a life. Like, what's the point of it? Yeah, you're not going to have much of a life. That's why you have to have faith. Right? Yeah. Praise God. Verse 12. The manna ceased on the, on the next day after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Amen. So, again, telling us the same thing. And we have to understand that Canaan, you could look at, and you could write this, I have this on my note, but you could write it down. Canaan, look at Canaan like the land of promise. Right? The land of promise, but also the land of faith. We think about, amen, God has taken us to a place where you better have some faith. You better have some faith. Just so you know, we're, we're into that territory. And this is always the case anyways, if you're a believer. But really, you see the signs that are around us and time we're living in. Amen. God is calling us, amen, to somewhere where we need to have faith. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 17. You can see here, Amen. How God, and this is Genesis, right? It's the first book in the Bible. How God first promised this land to Abraham. And if we are people of faith, we are what? The children of Abraham. That's what the Bible says. Amen. So let's look at Genesis chapter 17, verse, starting with verse 1. And it says, when Abraham was 90 years old, and nine, 99, wow. wow. <laughs> See, you're never too old. <laughs> it's never too late. Hello? Someone says, well, it's never too late. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. And this is what he told him. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. When we're talking about that, he's just talking about be mature. Right? Be perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Amen? Or my promise, my agreement. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be any more Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations 
of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Amen. And I will establish my agreement or my covenant between me and you and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and thy seed after thee. And I will, and that seed is a seed of faith. And I will give, give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou, thou art a stranger. Talking about Canaan. Talking about the promised land, the other side of Jordan. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, I will be their God. Amen. Anyone that goes to Canaan with faith, I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you. Thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. Amen. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be as a sign of the covenant between me and you. Praise God. So there, there you go. Amen. God is following that covenant, that agreement that he had with Abraham. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. So that, that's the thing that we have to understand that uh, God is not a liar. Right? When he makes a promise, he keeps his promise. So when you walk in faith and obedience like Abraham, right? Then that same promise he made to Abraham is to you. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 10. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 10. When you have it, say amen. amen. And it says how? By faith. See? Everything by faith, right? He, uh, the chapter 11 of Hebrews is what? The hall of faith. Amen. It says, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out in a place which he should after receive for inheritance. What happened? He obeyed. Amen. He, and he went out not knowing whether he went. So faith, you know, some people have a hard time with that, right? Right? I don't, you don't know. You don't know for sure what's going to happen, but you have faith. You trust in God. Amen. You believe. Verse 9, but by faith he sojourned. Amen. He lived. He dwelt. He had his dwelling place right there by faith he sojourned amen in the land hallelujah of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac Jacob and Jacob and the heirs with him of the same promise hallelujah verse 10 for amen this is something that you see here in verse 10 for he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. Amen. He anticipated that God was going to give him, amen, what is from God only. That's faith. Amen. Verse 10. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child, delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen. Praise God. So again, uh, this is the, uh, a land of faith. Amen. It's, it's when God calls us, amen, to this area in our life, God is calling us, amen, to have faith. And we're going to see in John chapter 6. We see that Jesus talks about it also. John chapter 6. It's about living in faith. <coughs> You could look at it like this, and the Canaan, amen, and the promised land, and when you, when you uh, have faith, amen, when you cross the Jordan, amen, and now it's, we talked about it yesterday, it's, it's territory for believers only. It's for believers only territory. You have to believe, amen. 
So John chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 1. And it says, After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him. And then we see right here. What does it say? Because they saw his miracles. See? So you cannot follow God. You're not going to be able to follow God if you just follow him. Because what you see. Right? Abraham, he, he went without being able to see anything. He didn't know where he was going. Right? You cannot follow God because what you see. And it says a multitude follow him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Hallelujah. And it says, And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with the disciples. Verse 5, And when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him, and he says unto Philip, When shall we end? And so that, that's when he, when he does the, the miracle of the bread. Let's go ahead and go to verse 25. Right? They followed him because of the bread. In verse 25, we see a man that says, and that they followed. It, the, the, what happened was that the people followed them because, because of what they saw. They saw the miracles. And verse 25, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? When did you come here? And Jesus answered unto him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat. So, Jesus already knows why we follow him. Some people follow, and they still do it now. Today, to this day, people are following miracles. To this very day. Amen? And to this day, people are following God so that he'll feed them. You know? I mean, really, the, I mean, the big prosperity, the prosperity doctrine, right? I mean, that's what that is. But obviously, they don't just want food. They want cars and, and airplanes and, and money and all that, right? And they believe that. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And so, amen. It says, Jesus answered them, said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor. See? What happened? When um, they crossed the Jordan, and, and now what happened? The manna ceased, right? Yep. Yep. What they had to do, they had to labor. <laughs> you got to work at this thing. You got to work out your own salvation. And what? Trembling in fear. You got to work at it. And so, labor, a man says, try to enter through what? The straight gate. Because many. They're going to find the white gate. And they're going to be going through there. Many are going to try and they're not going to be able to. So watch. It says, labor not for the meat which perisheth. Amen. Heap, heap up for yourself treasures in heaven, the Bible says. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus plainly told them, verse 29, and this is what we're talking about, right? The territory that we're walking into is for people, for believers only. Jesus answered and said unto him, them, This is the work of God. This is the work. This is the work of God. That you believe on him who he has sent. Believe on Jesus. They said therefore unto him, What sign? There they go. They still don't get it. Give us a sign. Give us a sign. What sign showeth thou then that we might see and believe thee? What dost thou work? And our, fa our fathers did, and this is they, they bring this up themselves, right? Verse 31. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. It's almost like they're saying, give us a sign like that. Let the bread come down from heaven. We just want a sign. 
Amen? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said to you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is, is that which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto them. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you remember, all those people that were getting that sign coming from, from the, I mean, every day, right? They got fed. They all died in the desert. Because that sign did not save them. Signs will not save you. You got to have faith. Amen. Verse 34. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that uh, of all which he hath given me I should not lose nothing, but should raise it up again to, in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and will raise him up in the last day. Verse 40. That's really the only sign you're going to get. Believe on Jesus. See Jesus. Do you see him? <laughs> I mean, seriously. What is your motive? Right? Why are you living for God? Do you see Jesus? Do you see what he did for you? Do you know that he died for you on the cross? Hallelujah. Do you see the resurrection? Do you see that he poured out, poured out the promise of the Father? Do you see that? That's really all you need. That's the only thing that's going to save you. Amen. Verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread that came. So what, they just kept murmuring just like the people that died the 40 years going around the mountain. Mm -hmm. And they said, I, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother I, we know he is? And, and how is it then? And he said, I came down from heaven. And Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not amongst yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall be taught of God. Amen. 44, 45. Teaching, teaching, teaching. 44, verse 44 and verse 45. God is wanting you to just be taught and taught and taught and taught. Amen. And how does he do it? With the word of God and the Holy Ghost. Nothing else. Amen. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God. He has seen the Father. Verse 47. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. For your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are what? Dead. You did have that miracle and they're still dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread. I'm going to have to remember to use that scripture as I will say that. <laughs> Write down for me. I forget all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. And the Jews therefore strove among. Why? Because they couldn't understand, right? And the Jews uh, therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us of his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, very truly, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. Verse 53 basically is saying, You need to obey God's word. You got to obey God's word. You can't just have God's word and not obey it. To eat God, to eat it, to eat the the son of a man, the son of God, you got to obey God's word. You got to obey the gospel. Hey man, we're going to see that a little bit further down. Amen. 
Verse 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath eternal life. I will raise him up at the last day for my... Man, hey, you better come into my house when they come. Otherwise, well, you're going to be cursed. Come on. Amen. Wow. Praise Amen. God. And it says, In the city, verse 17, shall be accursed even it and all that are therein, uh, therein to the Lord. Only Rahab... The hardest shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that that we sent. Amen. And, and we know that that just means that Rahab had faith. Amen. Rahab had heard. See, Rahab may have been a prostitute, but she had heard. Somebody had been telling her about what had been happening. Just like today, there's people that are in sin, but maybe their grandma or who knows, somebody's been, maybe they even went to Sunday school when they were little. And all that stuff is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. And she had faith. Amen. And she said, man, I'm going to help you guys because I know that God is with you. Amen. Amen. And so she, she hid them. Verse 18, and you and you in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed thing. Lest you make yourself a curse and say, don't touch what you find in that place. Let's go to verse 19. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are co consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted. The verse 20, amen, hallelujah, is when they actually go ahead and do it, right? And so the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that what? The, that the wall fell down flat. That's really important. I would underline that word flat. Because what does that mean? Remember, they, they already encompassed that city seven times on that day. They have no real physical strength much left. They only have faith. Now those walls are totally flat. All they got to do is walk in there, man. So when you're in, in the will of God, and there is a real miracle or a real blessing from God, amen, and I, I don't have the scripture with me. I wish I had it with me, amen. But when you, have, when you are really blessed from God, it's really nothing you got to do. It just happens. <laughs> it just happens. It ain't no this big old thing you got to do or anything like that. You just got to believe. Amen. You just got to thank God. You just got to praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so we see that the wall, and we talked about that yesterday, how the archaeologists have said that they found where Jericho was actually at, and that, yeah, the stones are all laid down flat. They're not in a pile. They're flat. Praise God, just like the Bible says. Amen. Praise God. So let's go down to verse 22. And it says, But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she had, as we swear unto her. Amen. Verse 25. And Joshua saved Rahab, the heart of the life, and her father's household, and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Amen. And, and that's one thing that we try to tell people, and it's been kind of something that we've been talking about a lot lately. You know, once God reaches you, amen, once God saves you, stay. Amen. Yeah. Can I tell you that? It's nothing else. It's nothing else. It's no reason to check that. Stay. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> hey, I feel that of the Lord. Amen. I mean, He took you from drugs. Yeah. He took you from being a prostitute, and, and maybe you weren't a prostitute, but you were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you were idol yeah, worshiper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if you said, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Yeah. You were idol worshiping the marijuana, the cocaine, yeah. the crack, yeah. the women, the men, whatever. Yeah. 
And um, the money, the, the alcohol, mm -hmm. whatever, you were, uh, you were, uh, you were in sin. Amen. But stay in the house of God. Amen. And and don't just be, uh, and don't just be those kind of believers that come in and out. We have too many of those. We have believers struggling right now because they don't really have a consistent prayer life, because they don't have a, a consistent um, Bible study. Amen. They don't have a consistent walk with God. God didn't call you to that. And, and the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, man, He is calling us to the land of faith. We got to walk with God. We got to walk with God. Amen. And so we, we see, and when we started with our study in the land of faith, it takes teaching, 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 because without teaching, that's why it's so important that you be consistent to these Bible studies. Amen. Because it takes teaching, teaching, teaching for you to have that vision and continue having that vision. So you'll be like Rahab and you stay in Israel. <laughs> stay in the house of God. Amen. 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 And unity, amen. Teaching, teaching, teach you keeps you in unity. Amen. amen. Obedience, amen. It is, it, um, obedience is greater than sacrifice, right? And, and, and uh, disobedience and rebellion and stubbornness is as the sin of witchcraft. And trust you, me, you don't want to get into witchcraft mm -hmm. because anything that you that you do, amen, if you're not careful, opens doors to demons. Yes. Yes. And their influence, even if it's not a possession, their influence into your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So obedience is so important. That, like we just saw in Joshua chapter 6, right? They were obedient. And what happened? Those walls came down. Praise God. Amen. Obedience, alignment with God's will. Remember, the angel of the Lord, the angel that had his sword drawn, he wasn't there to make sure your will gets done. He wasn't there to make sure your desires and your aspirations got done. He said, no, I'm not here for that. I'm here to make sure that God's will gets done. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the power of God. That's being in alignment with God. And then confirmation. Amen. Those walls came down. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. We'll probably finish with that. Acts chapter 2. And there's many, many, many examples in the Bible. Many. Hallelujah. Of just being obedient, being a disciple, being consistent. That's what you need in your life. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2, we know what? The church is born in Acts chapter 2, right? The Holy Ghost is poured out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then we see, we're going to pick it up. Verse 40. Right? And what does it say? And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, What? Save yourself. Remember, what, how do we start our Bible study? And I wasn't really thinking about the Bible study. There's people that are struggling, amen, hallelujah, because uh, they got their eyes on other people and what they're doing. You know, don't worry about that. You got to save yourself. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what other people are doing or not doing. Make sure you're in there. Yes. Amen. Make sure you're in there. And it says, exhorting some, save yourselves from what? This untoward generation. All around you, people are doing what's wrong. You gotta do what's right. You gotta Amen. save your you gotta be like Noah. Build the ark, hallelujah, for the saving of yourself and your family. Amen. Amen. So like Rahab, right? Wow. Praise God. And so, verse 41. Then they that gladly received the word. What is he? He's telling us, save yourself. Amen. He's not giving them a soft sermon. He's saying, man, you got to save yourself. Hallelujah. Then they that gladly received his word were what? Baptized. They believed. Remember what we talked about yesterday. Baptism. 
The circumcision, may, what is that? That is a commitment. Mm -hmm. yes. That is you saying, man, I am committing myself. I am now ready. Yes. Do not be getting baptized unless you're ready to commit yourself to the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can I, well, Pastor Mom, I was telling people not to get baptized. Pastor Mom, uh-oh, watch out. I'm telling you the truth. This is a commitment. Yes, yes. People are getting baptized and just getting wet. Yes. Because there's not a commitment. Yes. That's why you don't see them anymore. Where are they? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's so true. When I first got baptized, I'm telling you, I before I got baptized here at this church, yeah. I first got baptized because I thought that I just had to be baptized right. and I was going to go to heaven if I got baptized. Right. I didn't know the true meaning behind right. commitment and stuff like that. Right. It's a commitment. It's you saying, now I do believe I don't want to do that stuff no more. I'm committing to live for God. Amen. Then, now you are ready to get baptized. Yeah, now, now you are ready because now it's a commitment. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so that's so important. It says, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. And they were baptized. And the same day there was added unto them 3,000 souls that aren't actually believed the same thing. Right? Hallelujah. They reached all those people. Verse four, verse um, 42. And they what? Continued. Consistency. Said fastly. Lord, we, we got to do this consistently until the Lord comes back. We're heading into end time territory. Yes. We're in, Amen. hallelujah, the land of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Continued steadfastly in what? The apostles' doctrine, doctrine. true, sound teaching. Hallelujah. That's what doctrine means. True, sound teaching. Don't follow other teachings. Don't have an itchy ear. Be satisfied. With the apostles' doctrine. Truth. That is true. Because if you have an itchy ear and you're still following something else, that means that you're not satisfied with the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking the bread and in prayers. And what happened? See, again, this is what happens when you are faithful, when you are completely following God. Amen. It says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were what? The same thing that happened with Joshua. Together. Together. Seven. The word, the number seven. Complete. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And they were together, and all had what? Things common. Yes, so much true. so, verse 45, so much so were they sold out, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They were so sold out, so convinced. Amen. Verse 46, and they what? Again, there's that word, continue daily with one accord in the temple. With breaking of bread from house to house did they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God, hallelujah, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord, there it is. There's the, the presence of God. Remember the captain of the host, amen, with his sword drawn. It's, you know, God is here to make sure his will gets done. Amen. amen. It says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Praise God. So... As we get ready to finish for today, just think about that. That we need to be in that oneness also. Man, we got to be consistent. Hallelujah. We got to be going forward into the promised land. Amen. Next week, we're going we're gonna to pick up something very similar to what we're teaching. Because I feel the Lord, amen, to go into uh, the passing of the mantle from from uh, Elijah to Elisha. Mm -hmm. And you will find the same, almost the same kind of thing where as soon as Elisha, because he followed Elijah faithfully mm -hmm. to the end, right to the very end. Matter of fact, he says, man, you asked for a big thing when he said, give me the double portion, right? Yeah. You asked for a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm gone, in other words, if you follow me to the end, 
You'll get it. And that's what we need, man. We need people that don't give up. Right? And so, and, and then what happened? He followed them to the end, and that mantle came down. And then what did he have to do? He had to follow, he had to cross the Jordan right away. He says, where's the God of Elijah? We can't do nothing without God. You know, we got a territory ahead of us, but it ain't going to happen without God. And that's what, it, that's what Elisha was saying. Man, now I'm in charge. Remember, he gave, kind of gave a funny example yesterday, right, brother? I hope it's okay. Pastor said, what if I just say goodbye and I put Jared as a pa head pastor, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. If that ever happened, Jared better be saying, man, I need the God of Pastor Delgado right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, help me. That's exactly the sense right there. I just want you to get a hold of that. Yeah. That's exactly what it was happening. And I just said, hey, man. I'm it now. But wow. well, I need the God of Elijah. Wow. You gotta be ready. Where are you at? I need you, man. I'm not going to be able to go any... I can't even take the next step. Wow. All right? So make sure you're with us yeah. next week. And we're going to start on that. Amen? Where um, Elijah passes the mantle to Elisha. Amen? Because, again, uh, Elisha is a type of Christ. Just like... Joshua is a type of Christ taking up from Moses going forward into the promised land. Elisha is a type of Christ taking up from Elijah, the Old Testament. Right. Amen. Into the New Testament. Hallelujah. Praise God. So. We're all a type of Christ. And yes. Until Christ is formed in you. We're all a type of Christ because the Bible says Christ will be formed in us. Right. Amen. So that, that's the thing. And so Christ will be formed in us. And I think Pastor used that scripture yesterday. Mm -hmm. How um, the Apostle Paul actually prayed. And, and, the, one of the, and, and in a way, one of the reasons why the Apostle Paul had to pray that, and he said, because he said again. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. That, the, that, that the, the Christ, Christ will be formed in you again. Mm -hmm. Because the, when we talk about the Corinthian church, they were kind of messing up. That's why. Yeah. That's why every time I tell you guys when we teach on, on, on 1 Corinthians, always remember that Paul is actually reprimanding them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And putting things back in order. Yeah. And so now he said, I'm a, a good leader. I'm going to pray so that Christ be formed in you again. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So let's, let's finish with prayer and thank the Lord for being with us today. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for your word, Lord, and we pray for all those that listen today and that are with us and those that will be with us and those who will be watching online and, and later on YouTube. Lord, we pray for every one of them in every household, Lord God, hallelujah, that we would walk right into this land of faith and strengthen us, Lord, that we would yes. be have the power of God, hallelujah, be strengthened with the power of God, Lord. I pray, Father, that our faith will be strong and that we would do everything, Lord, completely, hallelujah, that you want us to do. And we know that by your grace it is possible. And I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.